I think for myself, if, if you think you know what's in store for you, just hold on tight because you truly are in for the most amazing journey of, of really self-discovery and at a whole new level of, of who you think you are and who you're going to be uh, growing into. How, how it manifests is phenomenal. Um, when I did this program, I, I literally had no idea the kind of changes that would take place in me. And, I, and they are still happening. It doesn't just finish when you finally do your monologue. It continues. It goes on. Um, it, it's just a remarkable process. Thank you, Claire. And I will add, uh, as I speak like you, you can uh, and, uh, listen my French accent, as Kelly say. I would just add that uh, dream bigger than bigger and really uh, allow you to, to be able to dream bigger because you will be able to, to reach bigger. And I think it's really important to don't uh, limitize your dream or your aspiration or your desire and be able really to let it grow uh, uh, at the level you, you feel it. Mm. Awesome, Kara. I'm just really taken by um, the evolution of women's voices and hearts by looking at all of you. And um, the opportunity is to uh, really embrace that at the at a, the community level, you have a community of women who are extraordinary. I just feel it with all of you right now. It's I'm just about in tears from it. Um, uh, because I can sense the evolution from when I was in the program a year ago. So, so it's like each group of women evolves women, our voices, our hearts. And so to see where you guys are starting um, you're already way ahead of where we were when we started and I can feel that. So um, just allow your hearts and your voices to really become who you really are. It, we are all here to be a gift to the world and it's just beautiful to be with all of you. Thank you, Janet. And let's just ask a question around what was your, you know, these women are being so honest today. What was your, your challenge? Like, what were you coming in to try to step out of and shift? And uh, Well, I'll just keep talking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, my challenge was, was uh, um, speaking, like really owning my voice, but my challenge became physical. Life got my attention uh, twice in my life where I ended up in a wheelchair twice in my life. And um, I was a marathon runner and ended up in a wheelchair. And the second time um, I realized, oh, wait, I, I thought I'd learned all these lessons. Somebody else said they love transformation. I don't remember who it was, but, but I love transformation as well. And um, I realized that, wow, I, um, there's something I'm really missing here. There's still more for me to learn if I'm, if I'm back in a wheelchair. And when I started Kelly's program in uh, September of 2021, I was in a wheelchair and I could not sit for four hours to do the course. And I ended up in bed most of the time, though I never missed a course. <laughs> I showed up <laughs> every time. But the what it was for me was my experience was when I would really get out there, you know, when you guys hit a home run and you really get out there and you expose yourself, I would then inevitably something would happen to me physically. I would get sick. Some, I would end up in a wheelchair. There was something that always was happening. And I found the courage and the voice to um, find out what that was and go into that and do my talk, and I've done it twice now, and continue to move through uh, 
what's in my body that tells me it's not safe. And now I feel safe to be me and I feel safe to speak. And I don't like wait for the, what is predictable after I swing out to the fences. And um, I've always wanted to be her. And so I uh, feel more and more me all the time. So awesome, Janet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. I love the honesty and just the power of who you are, who you've always been, but who you're continuing to become in support of others. Kara, what was it for you? Like, what were you struggling with? I was struggling with the anxiety and the panic attacks. I was living in fears for many times, but uh, just after the terrorist attack in Paris, that was really uh, close of my house. Uh, my anxiety beca became uh, really uh, chronic, and uh, and uh, yes, I, I was stuck uh, in this uh, in this anxiety. And my uh, ambition was really to disrupt because I was seeing that something that anxiety is mainly uh, on the body and physical, and uh, it's not enough to say, okay, uh, I will dare, I will do that, I will do that, because more I was trying. With uh, in a rational way, more my body was uh, going stuck and stuck and stuck, and then uh, I followed uh, the, the the program really to uh, free myself and free my body and be able to to see my creativity come back, coming back. Yeah, and Carrie, will you share with them, like, I mean, how did this play out for you in your body of work, like stepping forward for women and then also being like, it's that larger piece, right? We're stepping into something bigger and yet it's that part of us that's holding us back. I mean, you're here, you know, to, she's got a big mission, you guys. And yet there was a part that was still inside of this anxiety. Where are you now with that in terms of owning your voice and stepping forward in the world? No, I feel really better because um, I'm uh, speaking a lot of, on LinkedIn, doing uh, co conferences for corporate. Uh, uh, I'm really much more visible. I wasn't able to be visible like this uh, two, two years ago. And uh, I decided to go through. And uh, I, I really feel now that... Uh, I can see fears, but uh, I'm not stuck by that. I can really now hone my uh, body and be able to to know that um, most of my fears are illusion, and then I, I can go through. More, most of my fears are old belief, when I'm thinking that I will be rejected if I speak too much or if I am too bold or if... Uh, because I want to, to, to share my own experience, my own vision. Then uh, for women, I think that uh, that's make me, that's make us feel uh, unsafe, uh, to be authentic, to share a new idea. And then uh, now I feel much more powerful. I love this because Kara was always a, a powerful businesswoman, but we're sharing, she's sharing this level of her own voice and it's more, it's more exposing when it's your personal stuff that you're bringing forward, your own flavor. Yeah, I love that, Kara. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, Claire, and then I'm going to open it up. Claire. Um, when, when Kelly uh, talks in, in the uh, introductory workshop about, you know, that we're women who've done all the workshops, we've done all the work, and yet there's still that something there. And, you, and that really was my, my story, but I couldn't quite pinpoint exactly what it was other than I felt that there was um there was a hiding out and I didn't know what the hiding out was um I remember years ago I had two beautiful women in my life and they both individually said to me Claire we our biggest dream is that you see in you what we see in you and everyone else sees in you and what I can say today is I say to them, they're both dead now, but I, I talk to them and I say, Ferenza, Janice, thank you. I see myself. And that is really quite remarkable because 
when I did this program, there was a frustration I had because I've, do I've done so much. Um, and yet there was something that was eating away at me somehow. And I've really come into who I am and nothing dramatic has shifted yet everything has shifted. And I am now totally aware that there is a presence I have that I'm aware of, I don't believe I had before. Now, maybe others saw it, but I'm aware of it. And I take that as a complete and utter gift. Um, Callie mentioned, you know, that there are new things happening in my life. They're just coming to me. There are a couple of opportunities that have come my way. And all I did is just be me and I spoke. They both involve uh, 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 coaching at a concierge level. I haven't filled out an application. No one has asked to see my bio. All I have done is I've met these people. What the CEO of one company, I met 30 minutes on the telephone. She's in New York. I'm off to Los Angeles in a couple of weeks because she's invited me there for a, a, a private three-day retreat all at their expense. And I'm going, I'm just showing up. Another situation has happened with a, a lovely woman from Ireland I met a few months ago. And as a result of that, I'm off to Saudi Arabia in a few weeks to work with another client. And it's like, and how does this happen? I didn't do anything. I just showed up in a, tr in a very authentic way. And I'm going, wow, this must be what they talk, what they're talking about. And it just feels wonderful. It's just, mm. oh, goodness, you know, th thank you. I just go, thank you. Because I've always been somebody, I, I'm, I have a warrior spirit. I will try, I will do whatever it takes. Yet there was just that, the simplest of, it seemed to be the simplest of things I couldn't get through. And I know I shared this last week when, when uh, Kelly asked me a question and one of the biggest shifts for me through the course was identifying a, a very deep level of uh, another very deep level of shame I didn't know I was carrying and it was remarkable and it's like wow and luckily I realized I'm 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 still young enough to learn <laughs> I'm teachable still thank you Amazing, Claire. So amazing. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be with you three as a reflection and a mirror of what's possible. Um, so yeah, let's just unmute you guys. You can ask these three beautiful women anything you want. Like, you know, was it always easy? Was it fun? What, what would you ad advise? Anything you want? Sharon, go for it. Mute myself here. Um, thank you. Uh, Claire, I just have a couple of questions for you. Um, so you mentioned that you had that nagging feeling that um, something was missing uh, prior to taking the course, the training. Um, do you still have that? Does, does that, is that nagging feeling still there? No, it is. That's what's so amazing. It, it, it's, it's like, wow, it's gone. I'm, I, I have a sense of peace inside of me and not a P-E-A-C-E, -E, an inner peace and an inner calm. I thought I had it before, but this is different. It's just a knowingness and it's like, wow, wow, amazing. So no, I, I, I don't have that nagging feeling. I, I know who I am. So it hasn't been replaced with another message of, of positivity or, or anything? Uh, well, the positivity is that I know who I am. I can stand in that dignity and in that sovereignty uh, and, and have a sense of gratitude with it. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I'm also, you mentioned that you had um, shame that you um, didn't realize you were carrying. Um, has that uh, been dissipated as well? Uh, I believe it has because what it allowed me to do when... Um, I, I will say it again, I, I don't know if you remember it from last week or if you were on the workshop, I apologize, I don't remember. You, okay, what I, what I shared was when, when I was going through the program, Callie, Callie pointed out a behavior I have 
uh, is that I can uh, uh, say something and I would do a little laugh halfway through my sentence. Um, but what it does, it detracts from who I am and it's sort of a, a, a put down on myself, mm -hmm. a sort of a devaluing of who I am and what I'm saying. And when she first said this to me, it was like, I don't do that, <laughs> but I do, I was doing it. And it was absolutely quite remarkable. I hadn't seen it. I just hadn't seen it. And I don't need to devalue myself. Mm -hmm. and, and also, you know, being born in England, even though I haven't lived here for most of my life, um, there is that British sarcastic sense of humor that is very self-demeaning. And um, you could, people can say, oh, it's very funny. And it's like, mm, mm. I just, I just, I just go, mm, that's interesting now. <laughs> I look at it differently. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Sharon. Who else? Any other questions? What do you want to know? I have a couple of quick questions. Um, awesome, Kelly, go for it. Thanks for your shares, ladies. Um, Claire, can you talk a little bit more about how you released the Claire, shame? We have a little reverberation happening here. Right now, testing, testing. Let's let's do this. Let's everyone talk about did you release shame in this process? Because actually one of our first things we do is a deep shame release process. Why don't why don't we start with Claire and go around Claire, Kara, Janet, Shane, release. So did did I release the shame? Um and how did how did it happen? The first thing was obviously Callie making that statement, and that I had enough awareness to acknowledge it and know it was the truth. I could own it. Yes, that's correct. And then with the somatic practices that you will learn and the root and what you will learn, you will learn somatically of a way of, of being able to work through that to have a different experience. And, and you just realize that it just doesn't exist. There is no shame, it's gone. Mm. There's nothing either, it's, it's just dissipated. And it's remarkable. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Janet. Um, so, yes, I released shame. I released um, not feeling safe. And, and I did the practices. There's practices um, that I really love like you stand in di different circles. And, and I was very aware of how I felt when I stood in those circles. But where I released the most was coming to group every Saturday or whenever it was and allowing um, an expression of me that I uh, didn't know was in there and it wasn't a good part of me. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> and allow it to be held in the space of all the women so I didn't hide what I normally hide from people and I didn't hide what I'd been hiding from myself in the collective and that allowed me to realize wow I've got some emotions that I didn't even know were in my body that it's time to heal and the somatic process is what allowed me to heal in my body. Um, and yes, it's gone. And there's more to go. <laughs> there's new emotions. Uh, but now I don't feel so afraid of those emotions. I'm specifically working with, you know, um, you know, just some strong emotions right now that that I'm like eager. It's like, all right, let's get rid of this because I now know the impact of that in my body but use your sisters um use your sisters to and use this unique experience to don't try to hide really let yourself use the experience 
it's there for you and they're all there for you. And you're not going to like people and you're going to get hooked by people. And those are the people that are going to heal you. Wow. Thank you. Thanks so much, Janet. I've got a, yeah. I've got a question I'm going to give to you guys all at the end of the, this is perfect. It's going to feed into that. Kara. I will say the synthesis between Claire and Janet. I was totally committed uh, in that program uh, fully. Um, I practice uh, stomatics every morning and every night. I was, my, my um, objective was really to disrupt uh, this freezing that I, that I was uh, uh, supporting always when I wanted to do something. I was developing my program at this time and uh, for the first time with the high level woman and it was so painful. To, to work in that with that level of anxiety that was really contracting all my muscle, my lung mm. and my my back. And uh, I, I need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of energy to be able to do something really simple. Then I really, my I was totally committed to disrupt that at the end of the program. It was no choice. And then I follow uh, the practice. I uh, I did then the somatics, uh, the, sh the long one in the morning and the short one before to go to sleep. And uh, I did the embodiment center one. Is that the name, still the name? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know it yet, but yes. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the one who really helped me to disrupt shame. Always mm -hmm. when I have this uh, repetitive inner voice saying that I, I, I was wrong, I was not enough, uh, I was sucked, I did it. And uh, I wrote on the, on the, the handout, then I have so many. <laughs> I think I have more than 100 because I did it really always. And that's helped me to name what was happening and change the energy of uh, the emotion. The ability to name what was happening and to change in my body, to, to change really to what was happening in the new mm. energy, to give sense in what was happening was really helpful. Then always I was in a negative emotion, a big a contraction in my body, really painful. And this repetitive inner voice saying that I was really wrong and uh, not enough. And by this practice, I was able to shift in something else, in new story. And I did it again, 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 until uh, my body uh, find his uh, own uh, his own freedom, I think. So, and uh, it's, uh, it was a healing process. Amazing, amazing. You guys, letting go shame is one of the things that us women, the last 5%, is really rooted in some inner shame whether we know it or not whether we can identify that or not and letting that go is so 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 powerful who else anyone else and then i'll have a final a final question for these women who else i have a question um okay Lori, and then deb and then i uh, will close yeah go ahead um in in the um in the orientation uh one of the orientation videos and then somebody just mentioned it here there's this thing about like really hating some of the processes and, and <laughs> by extension, like hating Cali or hating, you know, and like oh. really having intense emotions and like not wanting to do it. And can you speak, did that come up for any of you? And how did you, how did you work with that? Me, to be honest, I didn't, I never feel that. Uh, I was so engaged and so committed to uh, disrupt my fears and uh, disrupt my own shame. Uh, I feel that Kelly was really supportive and uh, she's an excellent coach. Then uh, I never felt uh, anger or something against the program. <laughs> I was able to test everything to find a solution, to be honest. Mm. Then. Uh, and uh, I, I, um, I see Claire just before she did it uh, before me, and I see her transformation, a physical transformation, and I was so surprised. And uh, I decided to follow the program and to totally commit because I see what's happened to Claire. 
Mm. Awesome. Janet, what about you? <laughs> well, Lori, I'm, I was a personal coach for a very, very, very long time. And I know when I resist something that bad, it's really important for me. <laughs> so I was able to at least put that amount of discipline. And um, um, I don't know. I mean, I had a lot of resistance to um, some of the things. Mine didn't really show up until, um, well, it showed up with other people in the program. I will say that there was, I had resistance to other people and the coach in me just wanted Kelly to do it differently. And, um, you know, I had to learn to just trust the process. Like, okay, if I think I know everything, maybe I should probably get rid of that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's not one of my best qualities. <laughs> So I did, you know, I just, um, I knew to go towards the resistance. So, yeah. There were times when you wanted to quit, right? Right at the very end, which is pretty like three weeks before I've, you know, practiced this, like I've done all the work for a year. Mine was a year program. Three weeks before we're to go live. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. And who kept me in were my cohorts, were my sisters. I was doing it with two other people and I emailed them and said, oh, you guys, I just want to be, I'm done. I don't think I can go on. And they just loved me right there and said how hard it would be for them if they did it and I wasn't there with them. And here I am. <laughs> Beautiful. And the huge breakthrough after that's amazing. How about you, Claire? Was there, what was it for you? Or have you, did you see women who struggled? They always come around, but. <laughs> I, I mean, the only time I, I wouldn't say I struggled. I think I was um, put out that Kelly would say what she <laughs> said to me, but it didn't last long. It was true. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, I was privy to people say, you know, being upset. And uh, my attitude about it was I, I felt I could feel their resistance. And I would just kept, sh I would just be supportive and sharing. And at the end of the day, this is my journey. But when we are in our pods, we're there to support each other as sisters, because as women, we want to support each other. There was one woman in my pod, uh, she had the most amazing story amazing story and I was aware that she was not able to get through that level of shame and I've subsequently spoken to her about it after it and she she still can't go there and I think wow she and I, I, I said I have shared with her I said you've missed an amazing opportunity and I really hope you take the time to to allow yourself to to you know to move through that because what's on the other side is, is there's a freedom. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. You know, if, if we're all going to be resistant and some of the women are like, oh, because look, we haven't done this work before. This is a structure that I can hold for you. Kirsten can hold it. You're, we, you, we will hold it for each other. But we're not going to make, you know, we're here to do the real thing. So we're not going to, you know, just make nice, right? We're going to be real with each other. We're going to be real with you and support you. So, yeah. Amazing. Okay. Uh, Deb, and then we will uh, close the, the panel. I'll ask a last question. Deb, go ahead. Hi, ladies. My question is, for me, I really value clarity. And I'm coming into this without that. And it's really uncomfortable for me. And I just want to know if Mm. Either any of you had that same experience and did you get clear during the process, like your, the mission you're on or the purpose that the reason that you signed up to be in this course, this process. That's a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, my journey was, uh, the, um, Deb, that I had to get more unclear, more unclear. I got even more unclear. Mm. And, um, but 
the quality of curiosity grew and grew and grew. I don't know if you know, I, you know, I'm Capricorn rising. I'm just, if you don't know anything about astrology, it means nothing to you. But those of you who do, I have to know the answers and I have to be the leader. And um, I now have curiosity in me that I never had before. Genuine, not generated, which I don't know if you know the difference, but if you've done a lot of developmental work, personal work, you know how to generate an intention or whatever, but there's a, there's a genuine curiosity that comes out of me. And it didn't happen until the very end for me, to be honest with you. And what was there was, it was the kind of like the fear and the shame of speaking the clarity of who I really am. And once that got to clear away, the genuine, this is who I really am, got to come forth. I want to take Deb's question after we're done with this into the story and how the story gives you that clarity. Beautiful. So awesome. Thank you, Janet. Let's go Claire and Kara with that question. Clarity about who you are and what you're here to, what you're offering and who, who are you? <laughs> when, people, so when some people say that, I say I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. <laughs> And sometimes it, this journey of life, it just gives us lessons. And I always thought that I had the answer to everything. Uh, and I realized that when I listened to your question, Deb, which I echo from Janet, it's a fabulous question. Um, I think I was so caught in the old story that was shrouded in shame. And it wasn't until I went through the program as, and able to release that shame it just, it just evolved somehow. I didn't have to think about it, work on it. Through the practices and, and the somatic process, it evolved. But I've also had a willingness to realize that maybe there was something I needed to shift and I don't know what it is. In the past, I always needed to felt I had, because I had to be in control to know what it was. I don't need to know. I just have to show up and do what's in front of me to do. And, 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 you know, Callie's gift is to be able to be with each of you as she was with each of us in a very deep way. And Callie sees each of us at a very deep level. And that's Callie's gift. And so you actually don't need to be concerned about that. <laughs> Oh, That's like good clear. news or not so good news, but but it's uh, you can actually let that go. It's it's just a, it's a, it's. I had to give up that story and just uh, allow allow the magic to happen because it'll happen. Awesome, Claire. Thank you. That's so nice. That's so clear, Kara. How about you? Um, yeah, I have a lot of ambition at the beginning, thinking about my job, thinking about my program, developing my life, be more visible. And I realized by doing the, the work on my vision that my unique ambition, it was to, it was to, it was, sorry, to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Really. And I, I put all my energy and my intention in that feeling to really be able to feel what is it to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to be really simple, to don't ask for more. And more was all the side effect uh, with my uh, the launching of my program, but that was really side effect. My first intention was to, to be able to, to know what is it to feel mm -hmm. safe mm -hmm. and truly safe in front of people and in all my life in all my body then i've been curious uh, as Jeanette say and uh, really commit to the program and uh, really uh, totally in trust with uh, with kelly and what uh, she was doing and what she was proposing and uh, I, I decided to to play the game the full game mm. <laughs> and I was so surprised because three weeks after uh, beginning the somatic practice, for the first time for a few hours, I feel safe and creative. 
And it was the first time for many years that I feel that just that feeling to, to be creative and feeling safe and not thinking about what was happening, what will happening and what will people think about me. And, uh, and uh, I thought it's crazy. Just three weeks and I was feeling that. And I, I was sure at this moment that I was able to, to be able to feel that in a full time. Mm. And I will do the work. Oh. That, that was such a great question that you had. Oh. It's really, really thank you. Mm. Right, because we come in with, so, so the clarity will come through the relaxing into our body, the releasing shame. It'll come through our voice. And just one last question around this, which really builds on Deb's question is really you guys, okay, so how, because our story then is the last sort of threshold where we release this shame and stand forward and, and, and own ourselves in this way where we do come to this powerful clarity. But I love, um, all of you sort of said, we let it, you have to let it maybe get less clear before it gets clear, It'll let it get a bit more messy and be free to feel free. We're gonna feel free to just let it sort of, you know, we are gonna call it disorganized or, Right, because we're going to take it apart to recalibrate, to put you back together in a way that is actually you. But what about your story? How did your story help you shift uh, into clarity and, and out of shame? Are you willing to share that just really briefly? Um, yeah, I, I will. As you know, Caddy, I mean, I, I, I personally have been in recovery uh, for 38 years, uh, which is wonderful, which is absolutely fabulous. And when it came down to my story part of my story is saying about when I stopped drinking and and I thought I can't do that I just I, I cannot I cannot do that I cannot say that and I realized that um, I had spent all my years in a very protected world in quote unquote the recovery world where I can say anything and be me and it's it's okay but I wanted to take it out to the world because I see it is it's a, it's a global problem. It just doesn't belong in a in a very restricted environment. The addiction issue is is worldwide, and I I'm very passionate about that journey. Uh, but I thought I can't I can't do this, and I, and I I can't tell people I used to have an alcohol problem. And I thought, well, why not? I said, well, everyone, in, people in my life today don't know me back then. I can't tell them how I used to be. And I realized I'm not telling them how I used to be and all the details of what I used to do. All I am saying is I gave up alcohol. And it was such a shift for me. It was huge, but it has created such a freedom in how I am. Uh, it, it's a gift I have. It's a gift I have to share, and there is nothing to I have shame around. It's like, wow, I've been given this gift, and I get to be able to be of service in a in a big way. I love it. Would you be willing to to share a line from your story? Could you just start at I work for powerful executives and the designer, oh, okay. and, and and then end at end at you know the okay. in the thing. You know the one, and, um, and with Johnny Walker. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, my the, the second one is, you know, I'm now living in Toronto, working on the 38th floor for the chairman of a really successful company. I love wearing my designer Givenchy suits, which was the truth. And then at the end, as I go into it, you know, I'll go everything on the outside look really good. But on the inside, I feel like I'm living inside a closet and the door is shut tight. When I get home from work, I hang my designer suit in the closet, turn my smile off, and I open a bottle of Johnny Walker. I like my scotch straight. I mean, I can just, it's like, it's okay. That's the truth. This Fascinating. No shame, no shame to that. Right. Wow. It was phenomenal. And Claire is, is now being, the work she spoke of that's being called to her is with very high level concierge 
executives at the highest level that need support in this area, but they can't go to regular places to get it. You know, you can't, right? So they're flying her to Dubai and they're flying her to LA. Mm -hmm. She's trustable. Why is she trustable? She's trustable because she's, she's released the shame and she's owning the thing, right? She's the one for this. Yeah. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Claire, thank you for doing that. By the way, improv, improv. <laughs> Kara, story. How did your story shift your felt sense of, of shame and, um, uh, I think Clarity. as Claire say, uh, I was unable to speak about me and to to share my story uh, to anybody. I'm coming from a family with a poor family, a low level, and uh, now I'm working in, a, in the IES level. Then I was unable to speak about me, to give my own story, to share. I was so ashamed. And I was sure that people were not able to understand. Then, um, and always when I tried, even with my husband or someone, I, I never spoke and shared nothing. Because always when I try, my, um, my uh, what is the name of that? <laughs> I, um, my, yeah. Oh, throat? Yes, my throat was totally contracted. Then I was unable to, 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 to share a word. Uh, if I try, my body said no. Then uh, by um, at the beginning when we write, when we wrote the story, it was really difficult for me to find uh, the right way and how to do that. And I think it's one of the moments that we have to trust also the process and stay in confidence. Creati creativity will come and, um, and you have two uh, incredible people to help you to to, to, to put it outside and uh, and when I began to to name it and say it at the at the end more I was telling it more I was able to to speak my own truth uh, in a in a full-time uh, space and not only when I was saying my uh, my story and that changed something really deep on me I think so Right, beautiful. Kara's talking about the threshold. So, so yes, you have you stand there in your story, and it's this deep level of owning yourself, like you've never owned yourself, feeling this connection. You let go of those bits, right? Those little things that are quite that five percent. But then, what Kara's saying is, it it carries on into my life. This is how I am. This is who I show up as. This is why Kara's been on national TV. She's all taking just he's fully taking this stuff on sure it's still a challenge but she's able to just be her authentic self in her life it's so amazing yeah the threshold is ever giving yeah I, I think something really important I, I don't anymore try to be someone else than me and that is really important when I was in the national tv to be honest I was so stressed but I didn't try to be someone else I just be me and okay I see what's what I was doing, I said, okay, I'm not really uh, amazing. I'm like this, and I know that my level is that, but I did it, and I will do better next time. And I'm not too ashamed because uh, I wasn't incredible, but I know that uh, now I have the opportunity to do better. And uh, yes, I can, I can wait for that. I can do it and do it and do it and act as I never did before. Awesome, Kara. Yeah, we're, we're, we're breaking up. We're creating somatic safety to take steps that aren't safe. Does that make sense? We're creating safety so we can take risks, not to stay safe. Yeah. Uh, Janet. Um, so what's the question again? It was just around your story, like how your story shifted uh, the shame that's been in, sort of hidden and helped you just stand in clarity about this. Is yeah, me. yeah. So I never fully related to shame as the emotion. Um, the emotion for me was um, this little blend of um, martyr and victim. And, um, you know, I was right, you know, like, you know, I have a right to be like a martyr and a victim. I'm in a wheelchair, for God's sake, twice in my life. You know, there was like this thing about it. And I noticed when my other cohorts would tell their stories. Some of us had this thing, like we knew what we wanted to say and our story got 
us to hold up that flag of I've been victimized or I've been, you know, or I've, I'm strong, so I'm a martyr about it. And um, it took me a while to uh, let go of that. And um, because then I, there was this opportunity to uh, embody and allow sovereignty and dignity to come from me. I did my, as you, some of you know, see me, I, I do my story sitting down. I'm not standing up. Um, I leave my house and I still have to put a wheelchair in, my, in the car and I'm not driving. Um, but now that no longer, I got nothing going on about it. I am not, that's, I guess, where the shame is. I don't have shame about it. I do not, I don't feel a victim to it. I don't feel like I'm a martyr about it. Um, it has nothing to do with my value. It has nothing to do with my gift. It has, it, it is, um, it is the way, the journey I'm on in life right now. And how do I use that to inspire people? How do I use that to allow my voice to um, really like, why did I come here? Why am I here right now? God doesn't make mistakes. This is what I'm going through. So I was able to access that. I dreamed of accessing that, um, but I couldn't access, I couldn't let go previous to Kelly's course of victim and martyr. And I could, I completely let that go.